technical specialties that I think will be replaced by AI in the next three to five to 10 years. And I say this with all. Okay, so I'm gonna expand upon this. In this clip, he talks about how AI is gonna get rid of three different doctor specialties, pathology, infectious disease, and radiology. And essentially the idea is, is that these are algorithmic in thinking. Um, so it, while it takes a lot of cognitive load on the doctors, uh, a machine can do it much faster and then decrease the amount of doctors that need to do that job. Now, when some doctors hear that list, they go, Phew, at least it's not my specialty. But the reality is almost every single specialty is going to get shaken up in the next couple of years. So I'm Dr. Imam. I'm board certified in allergy medicine as well as obesity medicine. And I own two clinics, a weight loss clinic and an allergy clinic. So I'm also an entrepreneur. And I also teach medical students and internal medicine residents. So I tend to see the whole lifeline of a medical student going into subspecialties after internal medicine and then see what it's like in the um, business space afterwards. And I'm gonna bring up about three different points um, to kind of talk about this. The first point is the specialties that we see in medicine are very old and technology is rapidly changing that certain disease states are starting to go to different fields of medicine. So I'll use myself as an example. We used to use Dupixent for eczema and asthma, but now GI doctors are using Dupixent for eosinophilic esophagitis so if they see a patient first, then they might accidentally, in a sense, make the person's asthma and eczema also better. As a weight loss doctor, we use GLP-1s like Wagovi or Monjero, which they also appear to help with addiction. So you might start seeing psychiatrists starting to write those medications. So the lines on who do you go to for what disease are becoming kind of blurred in a sense. So while technology itself might not take your job away as a doctor, other doctors might. Now that sounds like no big deal, but you have to keep in mind that to become an allergist, an obesity doctor like me, took five years after medical school. I can't just go and start doing a different specialty because I have no experience in those specialties and I'm too late in life. Doctors graduate with like $300,000 in debt and they have to pick a specialty where they can pay off those loans. The second thing to keep in mind is that there are a lot of surpluses in random specialties of medicine and those doctors will flood the field taking over other specialties. So for example, there was a study showing that ER doctors or emergency room doctors um, they're probably going to be in a surplus of about 5,000 doctors by the year 2030. So what are those doctors who are board certified in emergency medicine going to do if they can't find a job? Well, it's going to cause a whole ripple effect. Number one, ER will become less competitive as a medical specialty. Usually the best and the brightest tend to go into the more lucrative specialties because they want to pay off their loans. The ER doctors that can't find jobs are likely going to become entrepreneurs, open telehealth clinics, IV clinics. They're going to go into a lot of other specialties that they might have not been trained in originally. I'm not saying they're going to be bad at those specialties. I'm just saying that they, they did three years of training that might be irrelevant to their future career. The last point is, is that in a lot of times in medicine, there is one procedure or one disease state that keeps a, a medical specialty um, a profitable. For example, I'm an allergist and I treat a lot of different diseases, but some diseases take a lot of time up and insurance does not reimburse. So you, you treat those diseases at a loss. Then other diseases are more profitable to treat because more procedures are allowed or insurance pays better for those diseases. Now that's across multiple specialties. So for example, if tomorrow there was a new technology that stopped um, GI doctors from doing colonoscopies, then a lot of GI doctors would probably go out of business. In sleep medicine, there used to be sleep centers everywhere but now there's home sleep studies and you barely see any sleep study um, centers opening up anymore. So sometimes these technologies are good for the patient. It makes it more convenient for them, safer, less expensive, but sometimes it also destroys a medical specialty that might be treating other diseases as well, um, which they can't offer anymore. Nothing I'm saying is necessarily good or bad. It's just saying that in the future of medicine altogether, um, increased technology won't just affect some specialties. It'll affect all specialties. The only specialties that are likely going to be safe in the future are specialties that rely on human interaction like psychiatry or things that have very specific technical skills like neurosurgery. But I guess in conclusion, the changes in technology have to make us rethink how we do medical education, how long should the medical education be, should doctors be stuck to a certain specialty once they specialize, um, should insurance companies be able to just play with the cost of how certain diseases are treated. Um, so doctors preferentially treat one disease state over another or specialties fight over the same disease state. Does medical training really need to be as long as it is so that doctors don't have a choice afterwards or can't go back and retrain if they needed to? And do the current medical specialties that we have, the way they are split apart, does it even make sense? For example, pulmonology is linked to critical care because a pulmonologist typically would know how to use ventilators and allergies linked to immunology. Would it not make more sense if pulmonary and allergy were one field? and critical care was its own field? If endocrinology and weight loss were the same field? I mean, they kind of already are, but. 
I'm not sure. I guess in conclusion, what I'm trying to say is that the landscape for medical specialties and what medical students are going to go into is actually very uncertain, depending on, it doesn't matter what medical specialty you're in. I mean, this guy is a, a trauma anesthesiologist. He probably has a very safe job for a long period of time. Okay, this is just kind of my rant. Maybe just because I'm scared of AI. Um, let me know guys, what you guys think. Um, I hope I didn't offend anybody. This is just my general musing and um, general rant.